This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Every month, Morning Consult releases a poll tracking the approval rating of world leaders. And despite being designated as a fascist and far right by the English speaking press when she was elected, Italy's Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, is reliably the most popular EU leader in these polls, and often one of the most popular global leaders too. So in this video, we're going to try and figure out why is Giorgia Maloney quite so popular? Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start by taking a look at Maloney's poll ratings. According to Morning Consult polling from late July, 46% of Italians approve of Maloney, while 47% disapprove, giving her a net approval rating of negative one. Now, that might not sound great, but for context, the next most popular leader is Spain's Pedro Sanchez, and he comes in at negative seven, while Germany's Olaf Scholz has a negative 34, and France's Emmanuel Macron comes in at a sorrowful negative 47. This isn't a recent phenomenon either. While Maloney's poll ratings have decreased slightly over time, she's consistently either had a positive or roughly even approval rating. And it's not just Maloney as an individual either. Her party, the Brothers of Italy, fares similarly well. According to Politico's poll of polls, if a general election was held today, the Brothers of Italy would perform even better than they did in last year's general election, and would win 29% of the vote, 9% more than the second place Democratic Party. Now, for context, at last year's general election, the Brothers of Italy won about 26% of the vote, making them the largest party with 119 seats in Italy's Chamber of Deputies, and the dominant force in the ruling right-wing coalition. It's not just Maloney, either. Her predecessors were actually even more popular than she was. Her immediate predecessor, Mario Draghi, enjoyed astonishingly high approval ratings, averaging a net approval rating of about positive 50, by far the highest of any leader polled by Morning Consult. The one before that, Giuseppe Conti, wasn't quite as popular, but still had a net approval rating of positive 25. In this light then, Maloney's break-even approval rating might not sound that great, but to understand quite how impressive it is, you have to understand Italy's reliance on technocrats. Ever since the collapse of the traditional party system in the 90s, when the Christian Democrats and communists gave way to a chaotic miasma of new parties, Italy has struggled to form stable governments, which is one of the reasons why it's had an astonishing 68 governments in the last 77 years. Politicians' inability to organize a government has left Italians generally wary of parliament and political parties, who are, along with the banks, the least trusted institutions in the country, with Italians being especially distrustful of national-level government. To quell this chaos, the Italian parliament has often called in uncontroversial technocrats to rule, like Draghi, who are always more popular than the politicians, in part because they get to act like the adults in the room, juxtaposed against the unruly politicians. Non-technocratic leaders, that is, prime ministers from governing political parties, rarely fare quite so well. Their last properly political prime minister, Matteo Renzi, who was in power from 2014 to 2016, was originally super popular, but his approval ratings declined over time, and he's now one of the most unpopular politicians in the country. And that's why Maloney's approval rating is quite so impressive. She's not a technocrat, she's a politician, and a pretty ideological one at that. So given that, why is Maloney so popular? Well, it's in part because she doesn't look like a normal politician's. In other words, she doesn't have politician vibes. And that's despite the fact that Maloney has basically only ever been a politician. She joined the youth wing of the Italian Social Movement, a self-described neo-fascist political party founded in 1946 as a successor to Mussolini's party, and became Italy's youngest ever minister in 2008, when she was appointed as the Italian Minister of Youth in the fourth Berlusconi government. Despite her political roots, she speaks fast, has a strong regional accent, and says things that other politicians don't or won't. 
And her anti-politician credentials were burnished by the fact that the Brothers of Italy were the only big party not to be included in Mario Draghi's grand coalition that preceded her. As we mentioned before, Italians don't really trust politicians, which means that anyone who can present themselves as anti-politician usually fares pretty well. And this was always part of Berlusconi's appeal, for example. Maloney is also really good at managing her coalition. The fractured nature of Italian politics means that prime ministers usually end up with diverse and unruly coalitions, and they're often brought down by internal squabbling. Despite the fact that Maloney has a number of ideological disagreements with her coalition partners, she's a staunch supporter of Ukraine, for example, unlike Salvini and Berlusconi, she's still been able to present a relatively united front. This is both because the Brothers of Italy are by far the biggest party in the coalition, which means that Maloney has all the power, but also because she just doesn't ever really back down. For instance, when Berlusconi said earlier this year that Zelensky provoked Putin by, quote, attacking the two autonomous republics of the Donbass, Maloney immediately visited Kyiv and said that Berlusconi was, quote, pretending not to understand the real situation and that he was trying to undermine Maloney on purpose. But perhaps the main reason she's so popular is that she's successfully rebranded. When she was elected last year, the English-speaking press almost exclusively focused on the genealogy of her party as an indirect successor to Mussolini. And as well as the fact that when she was 19, she claimed, quote, Mussolini was a great politician in that everything he did, he did for Italy. The thing is that Maloney doesn't say these kinds of things anymore. She does describe herself as a conservative, but rejects the fascist or neo-fascist label, and is far more likely to cite Roger Scrutton as a political influence than anyone like Mussolini. On, on top of that, unlike her right-wing competitors, she's also a cautious fiscal conservative, and as such, her party no longer advocates for leaving the Eurozone, instead advocating for what Maloney describes as a confederal rather than a federal union. Maloney has also stopped talking about the Great Replacement Theory, preferring to focus on so-called pronatalist policies, and as well as softening on some social issues too, including same-sex civil unions, which Maloney used to oppose, but now accepts. Now, it's important not to overstate Maloney's moderation. She still has some pretty controversial views, at least by West European standards. She's against same-sex parenting, for example, and is currently flirting with a constitutional change that would turn Italy into a presidential or semi-presidential system, potentially giving herself more power. Additionally, it's not like she's abandoned all of her ideas either. It's just that some of them look less extreme than they used to as they begin to slip into the European mainstream. On immigration, for example, Maloney took some heat for proposing a naval blockade on parts of the North African coast. But, well, the EU now has a similar scheme with Frontex. And early this month, Maloney went to Tunisia to negotiate a new migration deal with Mark Rutter and Ursula von der Leyen who are perhaps the most mainstream European politicians you could think of. So why is Maloney so popular? Well, her ideas have slowly slipped into the mainstream, she's softened in some regards, and she's also able to present herself as anti-government, which always goes down well in Italy. All in all then, it'll be interesting to see as her government progresses and as her tenure continues, if she's able to maintain this popularity, or if it continues to slip away. And that's something we'll be keeping an eye on over the next months and years. In fact, that's probably not a bad idea more generally. Things are always changing, and it feels great to stay on top of them as they do. Even within TLDR, I've recently shifted my video editing workflow from Final Cut to Premiere in order to better integrate with the Adobe products our growing team of editors prefer. Now, when I started with YouTube, I just messed around and taught myself Final Cut. But this time around, at the advice of my team, I headed over to Skillshare to take their course on the topic. Unlike when I taught myself the first time around, I was guided through the process quickly and efficiently and barely lost any productivity as I shifted from one tool to the other. It's not just that either. You likely already knew that Skillshare had classes for things like photography, editing, and illustration, 
But Skillshare also has hundreds of career-focused classes too. Now, we all know at this stage that traditional jobs aren't one size fits all. I mean, I quit my full-time job in marketing so that I could take more control and do YouTube full-time. Now, that's not necessarily the path that you want to take too, but the courses on Skillshare can help you design a career that fits you. That's courses on everything from how to start a business, growing in e-commerce, how to maximize your workflow, or the course I'm taking right now on how to build a business that lasts. And if that sounds interesting, you should use our link in the description, which gives you access to all of that for free. That's right, the first thousand people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So check it out and thanks for supporting the channel.